cast for magic. We come to the Pope on Film podcast to laugh, to cry, to care, because we need that. All of us. That indescribable feeling we get, which I'm describing literally right now. So how describable are we talking about here? That indescribable feeling we get when the Liz a Day theme song begins to play and we go somewhere we've never been before. Not just entertained, but somehow reborn. <laughs> Dazzling images on a small Twitch stream, stream, sound that is sound, somehow, Amaland horse erotica feels good in a podcast like this. Bunny Williams feels like the stoned parts of us, and May Lynn feels perfect and powerful because here they are. The Pope on Film podcast. We make movies better. Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is. I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode 482 of this podcast. And Bunny, I'm just going to let you know right off the bat, I took an edible about an hour and 15 minutes ago and so what i'm primarily going to be doing in this episode is focusing on the words that were written down by sober me okay okay so we got this okay funny yes this is an episode of celebration our podcast the pope on film was just awarded a huge honor. We won the award for best midsize sedan from Car and Driver magazine. Yes. Big deal. Real honor. We won another award recently. We won best Amityville horror film at the 2023 Fangoria Magazine Chainsaw Awards. Yes. Yes. That was kind of a tough one uh, for a number of points. For one, for our podcast not taking place anywhere near Amityville and our podcast not being haunted. So, so I I'm really proud that we managed to pull that out anyway. Yeah. Uh, side note, that is a real category in the Fangoria Magazine Yearly Chainsaw Awards, which shows you just how many low-budget Amityville movies people make in a year. Yes. Uh, now, I have two games for us to play, Bunny. Okay. At the beginning of this podcast. Originally, it was just going to be one. But um, the first game is about the 2023 Fangoria Magazine Chainsaw Awards. Okay. Okay. 
Um, but but one thing before we get too far, because yes. you you might not have heard, because this pretty much just happened. But Joe Biden. I heard has finally down. Donald Trump has stepped down from the from the candidacy. Yeah. Finally, yes. doing the right thing for America. I I don't know how I feel about that. Neither do I. Yeah. Um, funny. There were five films nominated last year for the best Amityville horror film uh, at the 2023 Fangoria Magazine Chainsaw Awards. There were five films nominated last year, and one of them is made up. And you must find the fake film. Okay? Okay. okay. So, here you go. Amityville Uprising. Okay. Amityville in Space. Amityville Scarecrow 2, which is the follow up to Amityville Scarecrow 1. Amityville Karen. And Amityville's Christmas Vacation. Those are the three films. Those are the five films. One of those is made up. Okay. You have to tell me which one I made up. I'm going Amityville Scarecrow 2. No, that Son one's real. Of a bitch. It's the sequel to Amityville Scarecrow 1. Do you have any other guesses? Well, I, I'm just stuck on the whole scare. The, like, Amityville is on Long Island. There are not a lot of fucking scarecrows running around. I mean, if you if you told me that it was that it was Amityville Crab Two, okay, I might buy that. But like, Long Island was not filthy with 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 uh with scarecrows so for there to be a scarecrow one is ridiculous for there to be a scarecrow two forget it what, what were the other choices because there has got to be one scarecrow Ca uh, amityville karen there has got to be an amityville karen amityville uprising amityville in space amityville karen and amityville's christmas vacation I'm going to go Amityville Christmas Vacation. That's fucking real. Oh, God damn it. In fact, I'm just going to, I'm I'm not going to torch you anymore. <laughs> it was a trick question. Those are all real. <coughs> all real. Amityville Karen, Amityville <laughs> Uprising, Amityville In Space. They're all real. In fact, here are some more real Amityville movies. Amityville Emmanuel, Amityville Thanksgiving, Amityville Cop, Amityville The New Generation, Amityville Vibrator, Amityville Playhouse, Amityville Dollhouse, An An Anity, Amityville Clown House, Amityville No Escape, Amityville The Evil Escape, so much for it not escaping, uh, Amityville Moon, Amityville Asylum, Amityville Curse, Amityville Gas Chamber, and my favorite, Amityville in the hood. In the hood. Yes. Bunny, thank your lucky stars we didn't do that summer. Yes. It was in the running for a while. That That probably would have just tipped me off the edge. Yeah. I... It, my... Two of the ideas were either for uh, Amityville movies or shark movies. Because Amityville movies are about as cheap to do as shark movies. And speaking of shark movies, here are some real shark movies. Jurassic Shark, Ghost Shark, 
Ouija shark, bull shark, cocaine shark, uh, alien shark, atomic shark, snow shark, Noah's shark, three-headed shark, five-headed shark, six-headed shark attack, shark exorcist, sharkula, zombie shark, swamp shark, ninja versus shark, raiders of the lost shark, 90210 shark, shark side of the moon, and uh, we already did two of the real shark movies out there. House Shark, I love that movie. And Santa Shark. Remember yes. Santa Shark? Santa Shark, I remember I remember not really being as bad as one would think. Yeah. Like, I had so many bad ideas for uh, summer themes that it's a good thing the show's ending in October. <laughs> Bunny! Yes. Now it's time for the next game, which very which may very well be the most challenging game that we have ever played here on the Pope on Film podcast. And FYI, I did not invent this game. I actually saw a bar do this during a trivia night. But with my deep inside knowledge of the subject, I knew I had to retool it, give it my own spin. And so, Bunny, are you ready for our next game? Yes, I am. Okay, it is time to play one of the most difficult games ever concocted for the Pope on Film podcast. Female wrestler or drag queen? Okay. Are you ready for this? I, I'm, I'm not completely sure. Okay, I'm going to say a name, and you have to tell me if that is a female wrestler independent wrestler luchadora or okay 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 but i don't have to specify like that do i don't i don't have to be like oh that's a that's a female wrestler's name and they are a luchador no no okay wrestler is good right i just say wrestler and i'm okay 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 i have 20 names that kind of scared me yeah I have 20 names. I already did this quiz with my two youngest kids. Max got a 10 out of 20, and Eleanor got an 11 out of 20. Okay. So not only will you be, you know, fighting for uh, pride, you're also you're also going to be fighting to try and beat Max and L. Okay. Okay. So here we go. A lot of the wrestlers... The female wrestlers are AEW wrestlers or independent wrestlers. And a lot of the drag queens I specifically know and or have worked with. Okay. So this is going to be fun. Number one, Trish Stratus. Wrestler. That was an easy one. Good job. Good job, buddy. Good job. Well, Number it was two. from my decade, too, so... Yeah, yeah. Number two, RuPaul. Drag queen. Drag queen, okay. There you Although, go. Although, do, do we know that he does not wrestle? No, we don't know that. We don't know that. Uh, I will say, you definitely have an advantage solely because both of my two youngest got the first two wrong. Okay. And, and and it kind of hurt, you know. But yeah, how in the world would and either of my kids know who Trish Stratus is? Uh, number three, Willow Nightingale. That's a drag queen. That is a wrestler. She currently wrestles really? for AEW All Elite Wrestling. Well, she has a backup career. Okay. Just in case okay. this whole wrestling thing goes south, yeah, it is something that she should consider. Because really, Willow Nightingale? Willow Nightingale. If I was yeah. a drag queen, I would have to consider Willing- Willow Nightingale. Yeah, it's a good name. Yeah. It's a good drag name. Number four, 
Tootie Lynn. Tootie Lynn. Yeah. I'm real high I'm, right I'm now. I'm going to go wrestler on that one. Good job. She is a wrestler. She occasionally wrestles with AEW, but uh, most of the time she's with MPW. Number five, Paprika Cherry. Caprica Cherry. Yes. That's a kind of borderline. I'm going drag queen. Good job. Paprika Cherry is a drag queen. I have worked with them a couple of times. They are very awesome. Uh, number six, Hex Ray. Hex Ray? Yes. H E X. I'm going wrestler. Nope, they are a drag ah. queen. Uh, drag king, to be precise. Uh, I've worked with them twice. They do a drag number, and it's a uh, manner Muppet from the. Uh, the Muppet reboot movie. Okay. And they're singing the man part, and then on their hand they have a little puppet, and the puppet sings the, the puppet part. It's adorable. I love them. I love Hex, right? Sailor C. You've really picked some tough ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going wrestler. They are a drag queen. Damn it. Uh, the full name is Sailor C. Rhinestone. I effing love them. I got high okay, with them. Okay, and that's before. cheating. If you drop off the last word, I, I don't Sailor know. I, C. I think that's cheating. Huh? Okay, okay, okay. The Rhinestone uh, may have helped that decision. They do a drag number to uh, Ziggy Stardust. And I absolutely love it. Okay. Uh, number eight. Marina the Problem. I'm going drag queen on that one. Ah, wrestler. Oh, fuck she's you. <laughs> he's currently a jobber for AEW. This is so great. And I'm having so much fun. So I only okay. got I only got three now. I still You've only got, have. You have four questions right so far. Four, okay. Uh, number nine, Diamante. Your sound just went funny. You sound underwater. Really? Uh, shit, shit, shit. Try Hold again. On. Just maybe you covered it up or some shit. How how am I now? You better. Yay? Better. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh number nine, Diamante. That could be anything. Yeah. Like not just wrestler or drag queen. It could be anything. It could be a representative in the House of Parliament for the Labor to, for the Labor Party, Diamante. True, too true. You know, Senator Diamante. Yeah, I'm going wrestler. Good job. Oh. They, uh, I believe they're currently the Ring of Honor Women's TV Champion, but don't hold me to that. I believe she is. Number ten. Dion Monroe. Well, again, that's just anybody. Like, that can be an accountant. Yeah. <sighs> Attention, passengers. I will be your captain. My name is Dion Monroe. Perfectly acceptable. <laughs> Wrestler. 
shitty no, wrestler. A drag queen. Drag queen. They, I am sorry. They Get are, another they're, name. They're one of my drag parents. Yeah. Yeah. They they love me. Number eleven. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're a wonderful person. Get a better name. Dion Monroe. I love Dion Monroe. I. Uh, uh, number eleven. Lizzie Evo. Lizzie Evo. Yeah. Drag queen. Nope, she's a wrestler. She's in the UK independent scene. Uh, number 12, Topatio. Drag queen. Yes, I, I, I shared a stage with them uh, at the Tower Theater. Yay. Uh, so you have six right, and we're going on to number 13. I believe in you, bud. Okay. 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 Number 13, Enchantra Rose. Oh, that's a drag queen. That, yes. That, I, I, I would take that before Willow Whisper or whatever that was. Willow Nightingale. Willow Nightingale. Yeah. Enchantra yeah. This Rose. This is a good they name. They love me. What? They love me. Yeah. Uh, Enchantra Rose invited me to a uh, stoning session. That's when a drag queen has an outfit and wants it to be covered in rhinestones, but that takes forever. So the drag queen uh, invites a bunch of friends, close friends, to come to the house, and there's pizza, and you get stoned, and you all rhinestone outfits. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That sounds so like I was fun. Invited, I was invited to a stoning. Okay, number 14. Thecla. 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 T-H-E-K-L-A. Thecla. Thecla. the name of one of my lawyers wrestler good job uh she is currently wrestling with the stardom promotion which is an all-female uh wrestling organization so all right you've already got eight and we are moving on now to number 15 vicky dillard Vicky Dillard? Yes. That's just the name. Wrestler. No, they are a drag queen. Uh, I have worked with them twice, and I have no idea why, but uh, they fucking hate me. Oh. I have no idea why. But I like Vicki Dillard. Uh, Vicki Dillard looks exactly like my high school journalism teacher. Yeah. So. Uh, number 16, Asuka. Asuka? Mm-hmm. Madison? Dun, 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 No. No. Oscar. Uh, I'm going to go wrestler. Damn right. She's the three-time WWE women's champion. Okay. Fucking love her. She, oh, my gosh. And she has a so, YouTube channel. So now I'm, oh. now I'm going with the whole... Well, the last one was a drag queen, so it probably wouldn't be a drag queen again. Let's go. Yeah, wrestling. but you know that I always fuck around with those. Yeah. So, number 17, Ava Payne. Ava Payne. Yes. 
That sounds way more wrestlery. Going wrestler. Oh, right. Wrestler? Okay. No, it is a drag queen. I've worked with them three times. They are delightful. Really? Yes. Ava Page. Number 18. Queen Aminata. Wrestler? Because it's got to be a wrestler soon. Yes, she is a, a wrestler in the Japanese, uh, in the indie wrestling scene there. You have 10. You have currently uh, tied Maxwell, but there's only two questions left. Yeah. So if you want to beat Eleanor, you're going to have to get these next two right. Okay. A, a friend would help me cheat. Just saying. Number, <laughs> number 19, Hilda Mangle. Hilda Mangle. That still sounds like a wrestler. That is a drag queen. Oh! They are, their real name is Steven, and they are one of Bite the it, owners. Eleanor. Of, they're one of the owners of Point A, the theater that I do uh, shows at on the regular. Uh, number 20, Kalea Fierce. Kalea Fierce. I'm going drag queen on that one. Good job. Not only are they a drag queen, but I have the hots for them. Oh. Boom. So, uh, that was female wrestler or drag queen. Uh, 20 questions. Bunny, you got 11 out of 20, meaning you perfectly tie my eight-year-old Eleanor. Yeah, but I could still beat her up. Yeah, you could still kick her ass. Probably. When she gets around this, 10, I'm going to be nicer to her. Yeah. This is a difficult game, and also I that love was. it. That was. I love it. I wrote that even... I wrote that before the before last week's episode. Yeah. The day before we recorded the last episode. So, uh... That's all. That's all I've got for... For Jeff, how are you, how are you doing, Bunny? I am okay. I am okay. We are going Ooh. away for a while to up to Washington for my son in law's wedding. Hell yeah! Okay. And like, we're going to go rent the car immediately after the show. That kind of a thing. So, yeah, that's what's going on there. Cool. That's the current uh news. Other than that, uh, everything's going to hell. So, whatever. Yeah, Ev everything, everything in the world is it. It everything's sad <laughs> and just getting worse. Yeah. See, sometimes I I think that I'm in the absolute worst uh, timeline, and everything's going to shit, and everything's horrible. There is one thing that cheers me up. And that's the fact that I live in the timeline where, huh, I'm going to go purchase some weed to the yeah. weed store. Which yeah. weed store should we go to? The one there, the one there, the one there, the one there, the one there. Uh, let's go to that one. Oh, no, I don't like that one. Let's go to this weed store. And you walk in, weed store. And Ten minute warning. warning. That was perfectly timed. Wow. And then you walk into the weed store. Hi, I'm a weed employee. What can I get you? And then you can say, I want a weed that will make the walls turn into vines and uh, the ceiling hung with vines and the walls become the world all over and takes me to where the wild things are. Okay, here you go. It's called a purple nipple explosion. Let me put it in a bag, 
Here is a receipt. Thank you for shopping at the weed store. Yes. That's fascinating to me. Yes. Uh, we're going to need a lot of weed. We're going to need a lot of weed to get through this. Uh, yep. The whole lead up to the election is going to be horrible. Uh, I think that they need to do the American people at least one small favor. And my God, you haven't listened to me up to this point. Even though everything that I said was going to happen is happening. From here on out, regardless of the candidate, any speech, any rally, any interview, any public appearance of any sort, they must do it with a chimp. Hell. They have to do it with a chimp. They have to... Trump has to sit there and tell us how religious he is with a chimpanzee sitting on his lap. Hell yeah. I'm down with that. That sounds like some sort of that that's that's a that's something the Klingons used to do. Yes. And and it, it's a it's a sign of virility. So whoever yeah. the Democratic candidate is I, I will I, I I will accept nobody else except Ryan Reynolds. But anyway, then Ryan Reynolds, has, when he's giving a speech, has to be standing there holding hands with a chimpanzee. Hell yeah. I pick Ryan Reynolds because I want somebody who will win. Of right. course, the Democrats are douchebags and they'll probably pick Hillary. Um, Joe Biden. If they pick Hillary, already... just head for the fucking border. Uh, Joe Biden has already endorsed Kamala Harris yes. as president. I think just to fuck with Trump, she should get Obama to be her president. That'd be fucking hilarious. That'd be so funny. No, Michelle Obama. Oh, Michelle Obama. Oh, man, people who would be pissed. Yeah. That would be wonderful. That would be that would be just mwah, chef's kiss. On the apocalypse, yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well. Uh man. I I'm just really excited for this week's movies, the trip from 1967 and we've done that in a very early episode of yes. this show before and piranha which i don't think we've done before no i'm pretty sure we haven't but i don't uh, think i've seen it since it first came out yeah so uh, yeah. it was kind of like think... going in fresh yeah for me like i think i saw it in like high school or college but yeah yeah, this was kind of a fresh watch for me as well. Excited to get to talking about that. But before we do, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should take a break. Yes, I agree. We will be right back with more of the Pope on Film after this. Do 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 skitty bop do wow and break Well hey there my little leg rolls it's me Dabney the fucking alien A lot of you've been asking to hear more about Beta Prime B. Beta Prime B is more advanced than Earth by 20 years It'll give you a glimpse into your future. <sighs> we have more disease and ecological catastrophes than you can imagine in your darkest dystopian nightmares. We have winds so strong that it picks up livestock. You never know when it's going to start raining cows. Large chunks of land have been swallowed up by the ocean, 
and there have been frequent Kevin Costner sightings. We have 48 bar- variants of COVID-19, 27 variants of Ebola, and a collection of de- diseases released by the melting ice caps, collectively known as climate fever. We found that if you make a solution of silly putty, vodka, and snot, and inject that directly into your cock, it'll stop most diseases from entering your body. Trust me. I'm an alien. For now, enjoy these videos from Undead Cow Studios and the Pope on Film. And I think Ted Cruz is a great guy. I think Social Security should be uh, privatized. You can't go to a supermarket without being accosted by a homeless guy. Democrats and liberals attack viciously. Hello, everybody. It's me, Reverend Steven. Today, we're going to be doing a little taste test. I live in Oklahoma, more specifically Shawnee, Oklahoma, which is where the first ever Sonic drive-in restaurant was uh, started. This this town is the birthplace of Sonic. There's one, two, three, four within driving distance. So they just recently announced I say recently, a couple of months ago. They announced that they were working on a hard seltzer because everything has to have a hard seltzer now. Everything. They're going to make the blood of Christ hard seltzer. Everything has to be a hard seltzer. And I've been looking and looking and looking for it because I, I feel that Sonic food is okay. It's fine. Cat, no. Fuck off. Stop getting on my goddamn computer. Sonic food is fine. It's okay. It's all right. But what keeps bringing me back to Sonic is two things, Cherry Limeade and Ocean Water. So today I found Sonic Ocean Water Hard Seltzer. And uh, I I have, it's 5% alcohol per volume, 100 calories and one gig of sugar. One gig of sugar. They they also sell it in a variety pack. I kind of smell it's like ocean water. They also sell it in a variety pack, and what I've heard is that two of the variety pack are great, and the others are shit. And so you're stuck with a bunch of uh, drinks that you won't ever want to drink. So I figured... Since o- Ocean Water and Cherry Limeade are the absolute best drinks at Sonic, that it's a 50-50 chance that I'll like this. Anyway, let's give it a try. Down the hatch. You're just doing a little dance on the side? Oh, for the dog. Okay, yeah, you gotta do a dance for the dog. There's no good way to say this. This tastes like a water park. This tastes like sunscreen. This tastes like the water park inside of the California State Fairgrounds. The lazy river and the wave pool. And oh no, I've gotten a little bit of the water of the wave pool in my mouth. That's what this tastes like. But I, I don't know. It does taste like ocean water. It, I mean, whether or not I like the taste. Cat, I swear to fucking God. It does taste a lot like a water park. Uh, but I don't know. I think this is all right. Not a thumbs up. You get a thumb... A diagonal thumb. One diagonal thumb. It's not a thumbs up, and it's not a thumbs down. But it's not even a thumb sideways. It's, it's, it's like a, it's one of these thumbs. I wouldn't go out and buy another 12 pack, but if my choices were a Budweiser and this, I'm getting this. 
So, there you go. Sonic Hard Seltzer. These are hard to find. I've been looking for them for the longest freaking time, and I finally found one. So if you can, if you can find one, just get it. Just to try it. This is all right. I'd rather have this than a freaking LaCroix, I can tell you that. Rather have this than a, than a, what is that thing that all the freaking white people are drinking? White Claw. White Claw! Rather have this than a White Claw. This has more taste to it. Wow. I look good right now. Hey. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, so that's my taste test. Sonic, hard seltzer, ocean water. It's all right. It's all right. Thanks for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe. See you later. On the death of John McCain, Lindsey Graham was forced to roam the halls of Congress in search of another set of balls to lick. Luckily, Trump's nutsack was within sniffing distance. No matter how many times Trump hurled insults at Lindsey Graham's best dead friend, Lindsey sucked up that scrotum like Thursday's soup. Oh, you're the best golfer I've ever seen, Mr. Trump. Oh, you bring a kind of magic to the Republican Party, Mr. Trump. Lindsey Graham. What a fucking beta cup. Check out this video by our friend Tim Caldwell. In the village of Santo Palo, there is celebration. We bake mighty fine pastries this week. Yes, indeed, many fine cakes and cookies. It will bring lots of money to the village. In fact, I have announcement to make. We have finally made enough money that we can buy every whisk oh. and give Mama Rosa a rest. Oh, thank you, thank you. Now I can die I'm happy. <laughs> Let the celebrations continue. Not so fast. Who are you? Oh. I am Sean Connery. I have come for your gold. Any objections? No! Oh. No! Oh. No objections? Senor, we are a poor village of bakers. And one prostitute. We have no gold. Just the ingredients to make our pastries. You are a village of bakers? Then I will take your ingredients. Ocho Cinco will stop you! I am afraid of no man whose name has four syllables. I will take your supplies. But first, those pancakes you made this morning weren't fluffy enough, woman. Ah! Oh, no! Oh, no! Who dares take these ingredients from these people? I do. Then I shall stop you. Wrap it up, man. Melrose is on at nine, please. Do you think he's dead? I don't know, is he breathing? Let's take his wallet! Who did this to me? It was that gringo, Sir Ocho!
You shot me? I came here to defend this village against evil and you shot me? This will not go unpunished. I am Ocho Cinco and I... You shot me again. Who do you think you are? Don't you know guns are... Please stop shooting me. It's okay. I'm out of bullets anyway. Good. Now we will fight like men. No. I'm not used to hitting men. I will take my leave of you and your crappy village. But mark my words, Ocho. I'll be back. I won. Ocho, you have saved us! Oh, you have made our village safe again! Thank you, Ocho! I will always protect this village against the gringos and the vampire wizards. There are lots of things a woman does not need, but every woman needs a man! I'll go find you one. The village is safe thanks to Ocho Cinco. Until next week, what the fuck is this? Hey! 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 I'm Peter Fonda. We've just finished making a movie dealing with the most talked about subject of the day, LSD. I honestly believe it will be today's most talked about motion picture. The name of the picture is The Trip. Here goes.
gives off an orange cloud of light that just flows right out of the city. Beauty you cannot believe inundates you. Your world, the people world, is fragmented. Distorted. Passion is a rainbow of ecstasy. Messengers of death, pursue. Terrify you. I'm gonna die, man. Oh, no. Oh, I don't, right. I don't want to die. If that happens to you again, you go ahead and go with it. Just go ahead and die. Whatever happens. The wildest of pleasures possess you. It will blow your mind. Who could have imagined they were there? Who could have predicted they would attack? And now, who would survive? Your Honor, they're here. Your Honor, they're hungry. What's the matter with you? Your Honor, they're unstoppable. Stop that! Hey, keep your hand out of the water. What's wrong with the water? The water is filled with carnivorous fish. Hirana, they call them the devil fish, because wherever they go, hell waits below. They breed like flies. There'll be no way to stop them. Suddenly, no one is safe. And everyone must be warned. The water is now a human death trap. Two people have been killed up there, and more have been killed all along the river. You've got to believe us. These are the man-eaters who go beyond the bite of all other jaws. Sharks come alone. Piranha come in thousands. Crazed by the scent of blood, they live by the taste of flesh. With razor teeth, they can strip a man to the bone in a frozen instant of terror. Piranha. They're here. They're hungry. They'll eat you alive. Who can stop them? Money and laugh for story time with Maylin, so funny and also kind of hot.
Pot. On Saturday, the 8th group, one piece of chocolate, an ice cream cone, a pickle with slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of jelly, one piece of sausage, one cup of egg, one slice of And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny. It's time. God damn it, it's time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to jazz hands our way into the second half of our big shoe. And it is said second half, wherein we finally in eventually get around to discussing our all new extra strength. And now with the amazing chemical meth movie of the week. And this week we take some drugs and go swimming with a hip and groovy double feature, The Trip from 1967 and Piranha from 19. 1978. Yes. Yay! Um, so this is our final themed summer. We're spending the summer taking a look at the very cheap filmography of Mr. Roger Corman, who sadly passed away at the age of I didn't want to look it up. Yeah, no. In the and 90s after this, somewhere. Yeah. And after this, it will be... Uh, We'll have two episodes left in our summer. Uh, so let's do this. The first film is from 1967. It is called The Trip. We did this movie in episode five. Yes. And here we are. This is episode long, 482. A long time ago. We did this. In episode five, that was so long ago. Do you want to know how long ago it was? I was a dude. Yeah. That's how long ago it was. And, buddy, we've been doing this show for almost 10 years now, and I I just want to come clean with you. Okay. Okay? This is going to be difficult for me, and I know that, you know, I'm I'm not entirely sure how you're gonna feel when I drop this bombshell on you, but here you go. This was my first time watching this movie. Okay. Didn't watch it the first time. All right. How about that? That does come yeah. as a surprise. Yeah. I I think I've only done that twice yeah. and, the, and that was the first time yeah so I had never seen this movie before I saw the ending but that's it uh, I, I know so, I know I skipped a, mo a movie or two and faked it but I do not remember what those movies may have been yeah I, I've always known it was this one and yeah. so that it just finally coming clean, I feel a lot better. Uh, I had no idea that Roger Corman made an Easy Rider prequel. An Easy Rider prequel? Probably. Yes. I think so. And managed to make it two years before Easy Rider came out. This oh. is basically this is basically um my Blue Heaven, which came out before Goodfellas, is a sequel to Goodfellas. Yes. Okay. This movie is basically it's got the same people as Easy Rider and when you look, that's when you look this movie up on Wikipedia 
it's one of the first things that they mention. Yeah. Um, it became one of AIP's most successful releases and was important in the later development of an even larger cultural touchstone in Easy Rider. This is so, this is not a great movie, but this is a fun movie. It is nice and trippy as it should be, with a healthy dose of homoerotica on top of it. Yeah. What's to complain about? Um put on Inagata de Vita, watch the movie. And plus uh um, Walter Paisley's crush from the green do- from the blue door, the red door, the yeah. the green door. I don't remember the green but, door uh, or beyond the green door. <laughs> no, are from, we talking uh, about the Marilyn Chambers porn movie? No, or we're talking about the a Italian blood. Exorcist ripoff. With what's her name from Nanny and the Professor? I am so lost right now. Juliet Mills, I think. <laughs> so, which um, green door are you talking about? The one from Bucket of Blood. Oh, 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 oh. The brown okay. door? I think it's the brown door now that I think about it. It might be the brown door. I don't know. The blue door? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But um, the 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 girl that Walter Paisley has a crush on is the woman at the laundromat. Ah, uh, okay. And I love her so much. She's fucking beautiful. Um. So basically, P.D. Fonda takes. LSD for the first time and automatically he's in the music video for the safety dance. Yes. Where there are minstrels and midgets and then boom, he's in the haunted mansion at Disneyland. Yes. This movie really should have been scored by Led Zeppelin. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. Or They, the they have the range that matches this movie perfectly. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? What? Uh, or the Wiggles. Or the Wiggles. Yeah, either or. It would be spooky. Um. Oh, yeah. He, he jumps around a couple of different... He's at the beach. He's in the forest. He's yeah. being chased by the wraiths from the ring wraiths. And uh, I saw... I saw for just a minute very briefly, but very, very definitely, Peter Fonda frolicked. Yes. Yes. It was a and moment and during, then it was gone. I think during his trip, Roger Corman might have um, used some footage from some other movies. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I remember seeing like a castle upon a hill and there's like lightning and shit. And it's yeah. like that definitely wasn't filmed for the trip. And then all of a sudden, a fish. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is basically an easy writer prequel. We've got Peter Fonda, Bruce Dern, Dennis Hopper doing drugs in a film written by fucking Jack Nicholson. Yes. And this came out two years before Easy Rider. So if anything, Easy Rider is a big budget sequel to the trip. I can accept that. And out of all the Roger Corman movies that we've seen, not only this summer, but also through the decade that we have recorded this podcast, um, this might be one of the films, maybe in the top ten, with the least amount of coherent plot. Yes. And and, and it's kind of very, it's a hard movie to kind of criticize 
because any kind of plot flaws or anything like that, well, he's tripping. Yeah. You know, like, what can you say? He's he's tripping. So, like, why did you break into somebody's house to speak to a little girl? I mean, that's fucking ridiculous, but, well, he's tripping. Yeah. Who why do you is think he you harassing? Are? Keeper Sutherland? <laughs> what? I said, who do you think you are? Keeper Sutherland? Yeah, exactly. I mean, why are you harassing women in laundromats at night? Especially well, once he's that tripping. used to work at the Brown Door. Yeah. I think it's the Brown Door. Uh, what were we talking about? Yes. Fun fact, Bunny. To research this film, Roger Corman took acid. Which uh, is I, why... I have heard of Roger Corman tripping before, yeah. Yeah, so he took acid in order to to research the film The Trip, which is why I am now excited to announce that I am working on my own film okay, in a similar vein to Roger Corman's The Trip. My movie is going to be called The Face Sitting. The Face Sitting. Yeah, I'm hoping hope Hopefully my wife will let me do some research on this upcoming film, much like Roger Corman. But uh, anyway, uh, critics hated this movie, but it came out during the Summer of Love, and it was a huge hit. It cost a bare bones, cheap ass, one hundred k to make this, and it made. $10 million in theaters. It was one of American International Pictures' big, biggest hits ever. And um, I need to get super fucking high and watch this. I have, I have not watched this film high. Well, there is also watched... the, there's also the movie that I am working on based on the trip or inspired by the trip, uh, which is The Embarrassing Stumble. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, basically, yeah. it is a whole movie where I fall on ice and cannot get up for ninety minutes. I was also. I, I'm. I'm hoping that my film, The Face Sitting, becomes a hit so that I can do uh, a follow up, and it's just called The Oral. I'm 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 a little bit hot, funny. You probably can't tell <laughs> because I am such a great actress. Ethan the dude says, "If you follow me, I will follow back." Man, shout out to Ethan underscore dot underscore dude. And I tried to reply to him, but for some reason the Twitch chat wants me to log in. That's weird. And I'm too high for that shit. So, yeah. Ten four. Sure, dude. I'll follow you sooner or later. You follow me. Sounds like a good deal. Uh, just not right now. <laughs> oh, let's not forget Dick Watch. Dick Watch. Did you see any Dick in this movie? I didn't see. I didn't see Dick. Yes, Dick Miller appears three minutes in as a bartender that has maybe one or oh, two. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then you don't see him again. No. So, yes, yes, he uh, was. I got confused with him being in the other movie. Either yeah. either way, both of these movies could have used more Dick. Yes. Uh, absolutely. In particularly. Piranha Cute could have used a lot more dick. Yes. Piranha needed a lot more dick. But in this movie, tell me Bruce Stern was not looking for dick. Absolutely. I thought that the entire time. I was waiting for them to kiss. Yes. Yes. So so there was there's that. And Dennis Hopper was looking for attention from anybody he could get it from. Yes. 
Yes. It it wasn't necessarily Dick. He just wasn't closed off to it. <laughs> you know. Back in the day, if you ever wanted Dennis Hopper to appear, you would just do LSD and he would that would summon him. Yes. He would just appear and tell you stories about the making of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. The second film was Piranha. Oh. Yeah. This film stars uh, Bradford Dillman, horrible name, and Heather Menzies. And uh, Heather Menzies and uh, I. the scuttlebutt around the studio was Heather Menzies had really bad cramps the entire time she was filming. Really? Okay. Probably. That's a that's a lady joke cuz her last name is Menzies. That was a that was a lady joke. Um yeah, so the... those are those are the stars. Yes. The co-star yes, of the... Escape from the Planet of the Apes. And the co-star of the television version of Logan's Run. We are talking top-notch talent in this movie. Okay, hold hold on, hold on, hold on. How dare you? Heather Menzies, yes, was Jessica Six in the TV series Logan's Run. But also, she was one of the fucking Von Trapp kids i the, have still never seen that movie the sound of music you've never seen the sound of music nope <sighs> but yeah she was now one of the von now Trapp. It's a thing now i have to die like that i have to die with never seeing the sound of music that's crazy i did i didn't know you haven't seen that movie okay um focus the trip took us into the 60s, and now uh, R.C. Cola and Joe Dante bring us into the 70s. And here's how you can tell that you have just watched a Joe Dante film. I went to the Wikipedia page for Piranha, and it said Piranha is a 1978... A 1978 American horror film. But then I was looking up Heather Menzies and all the things that she did. And she's one of the Von Trapp kids. And on her wiki page, it says that she appeared in the 1978 satirical B-horror movie. Yes. What what was exactly satirical about this movie? There was like nothing funny going on here. I did see it listed as a as a horror comedy. Yeah, horror horror comedy, uh, uh, satirical B movie. That's how you can tell it's a Joe Dante film. Yes. Growing up, I loved Gremlins, and then trying to show that to your younger children when you are older, that is a way fucked up, more fucked up movie than my memories. Yes. Legally, if that makes sense. I have no idea what I was just saying. That's how high I am right now. How are you, Bunny? Are you good? So we have, we have two people who basically caused the whole problem of the movie. Yes, absolutely. A woman who is a skip tracer for a bank. So I am not I really sure what her qualifications are here. <laughs> uh, she's half bloodhound. That's what her qualifications are. So she they made that quite say. Clear. And she is looking for these two kids who disappeared 
He just be it around here somewhere. Yes. And she enlists the help of a drunken hermit. From there, they go to a secret military place. Yes. Facility. Thank you. Uh, which luckily is abandoned because they break in. Mm-hmm. Always smart. Yes. And they investigate and they release the piranha and beat the fuck out of the guy who's there who was trying to stop them. And then they spend their rest of their time berating that person who is the closest thing we have to a hero in this movie. Yes. Blaming it all on him when he was trying to stop them until he dies. Yeah. And then the guy who dies, it I I, I didn't feel bad when he died because he was the bad guy in Weird Al Yankovic's UA chat. Yes. And it's like, ah, you deserve. But he to was die. our hero in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Very true. Very true. Heather Menzies. I think that this is a good, fun B movie, and uh, I credit this film's success to the fact that Roger Corman was making yet another disaster flick in the 70s with the movie Avalanche. And he was so busy making that that he was too busy to be on the set or even give a shit about what Joe Dante was doing. Well, it's kind of like I said when the trailer was playing. I hate this fucking movie. And I absolutely love hating it. Yes. And I will watch it a few more times before I die just so I can hate it some more. Yeah. Like, I never saw Piranha like Nothing too. makes any kind of... Again, our hero is a skip tracer from a bank and a drunken fucking hermit. She's a skip tracer from a bank, but also she's a fucking klutz? She's, like, not entirely there? Yeah. Forgetful and, like, comedic? It's really weird. Well, well, we could call it comedic. I could call it not being able to act. Yeah, there's that. You know, I am really sick of all the bashing of my girl, Heather Menzies. She sucked. She had her, she's had her period her entire life. That's why they called her Heather Menzies. <laughs> uh... This film was the first real Jaws ripoff. Yes. And the movie actually came out the same year that Jaws 2 was coming out. And so since this really was the first one to copy it, fucking Stevie Spielberg threatened legal action. To this really? Film. Yeah. He was uh he was uh threatening a oh what's the word not a not a boycott ah hold on he threatened a an injunction to prevent Piranha from being released nailed it wow oh. <laughs> But then Joe Dante, being Joe Dante, he was like, okay, well, I'll just find Steven Spielberg and talk to him about it. So Joe Dante brought Steven Spielberg the entire movie. And Steven Spielberg watched it and was all like, I found it to be a a fun, charming romp. Two thumbs up. And so this film was the first. And then after that came all of the all of the Jaws copycats. 
but this was this, the first. This movie is so bad that you really shouldn't admit that it has any kind of similarity to your movie at all. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Oh, it's it's not a Jaws ripoff. It's nothing like Jaws. It has nothing to do with Jaws. That, uh, yeah, no, this one you has would a bear. distance yourself from this movie, not sue, and bring attention to it. I'm working on a reboot of Snakes on a Plane, yeah. and here's my pitch. Okay, hear me out. Um, it's actually a parody of 1970s disaster films <laughs> like Airport 79 or whatever, yes. but it's a bunch of snakes on an, that are flying and are passengers on an airplane. Uh-huh. And then the snake captain has a heart attack. Oh, no. We need someone to fly this plane full of snakes. Ten-minute warning. Ten-minute warning. So... Snakes on a plane fighting for their lives. Who will live? Who will die? It's going to be yeah. a great movie. Um, Jaws ripoffs. Dick Watch, 54 minutes. Yeah, that was a long stretch of no dick. That was a long dickless stretch. But now Especially we Especially when, dick again, Especially when this movie, this movie, uh, it really, really needed Dick. It needed a lot more Dick. Dick Miller would have livened this up. And it, he totally movie, did. He totally the did. The movie's not fun until Dick Miller shows up and starts waving his dick in the wind. And there was one scene that I, I legitimately Kansas. thought was funny. There was one funny scene that I had I had an audible chuckle over yeah. where everyone's getting eaten at the water park place and Dick Miller's on the phone to some reporter talking about how oh no there there are no piranhas everything's fine oh, and yeah, then his yeah, assistant yeah. comes by I told you not to mention the piranhas what about them they're eating the guests. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I like I like that one line. Everything else was shit. It was interesting. I think there were three different pronunciations of the word piranha in the movie Piranha. Yes. So that was interesting. Basically, Dick Miller is the evil mayor. Pretty much. And yeah. Kind of. I will say this, though. One, one. I, I know it's hard to think that a movie like Piranha might have flaws. Yeah. On account of it's such a perfect film. But I have a problem with. Like the the campers are all like, Betsy, no. Oh, I can't believe they killed Betsy. Fucking, did you give any of these characters names? And and the, I, I guess I just ignored that part of the film, but who the fuck is Betsy? Yeah. Is she the dumb blonde one? Is she the kind of cool dark-haired one? I'm I'm very confused. Um, people get introduced just to get killed. It's fun. By the end, I'm like, eh. Did you ever see any of the remakes, Bunny? No. Neither did I. I wanted to go see the, the one in 3D because that sounded horrible, but no. Because at, it. yeah, at least it's in 3D. Yeah, at least it's in 3D. Bunny. Yes. That is it for this week. I need to go pass out. Uh, um, next week. Oh, very excited about next week. Because next week, we are hitting the next decade hard. Rock and roll high school. And the 
Fantastic fucking four. Oh. Yeah. Cool. The Ramones and the Thing. And at this present moment in history, the year of our Lord 2024, that has the most accurate Doctor Doom in cinema history. Yes. Which is sad. But I'm very excited to do the Fantastic Four movie again and Rock and Roll High School. Oh, the, yeah. The Always fucking, fun. Fucking come on. Yeah, so that'll be fun. That's next week. But now that I'm looking back at this week, the highs, the lows, the ups and the downs, I can't believe they ate Betsy. <laughs> Avalanche, Heather Menzies, the face sitting, the safety dance, Jack Nicholson, uh, Hilda Mangled, Willow Nightingale, Amityville in space. Yes. The Amityville goes west. Yes. Dr. Amityville. <laughs> uh, I got to say, I think this has been a pretty great episode. Of this has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I was going to say that exact same thing, Bunny. You're not going to believe it. I was going to say that same thing. But I decided against it because I didn't want you to think because I feel like you're the one who makes that distinction as to whether or not it was a damn good episode or not. And I didn't want you to think that I was, uh, you know, usurping your authority. <laughs> and it, I didn't want you to think that I was in any way stepping on your toes, which I was not. But uh, to summarize, to make a long story short, um. Totally forgot what I was saying. Oh, um, I concur. Ah, I, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend May Lynn. And on behalf of uh, Natasha, Q, Maxwell, and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Max, do you want to get in on this ending of the podcast like you normally do? It, it yeah. comes here. Okay. Uh, and you schmuggle And you schmuggle There we go. Hello, Hello, Schmogglebobs. It's time for the Schmogglebob Show. A show, a podcast specifically dedicated to Schmogglebob. Bogs. Schmogglebobs are. Oh, one moment, please. Yes. Poopy. Okay. Do 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 do. Cut and print. Cut and print. Is that the right?